Hey folks, what's up? It's Sarah here, and I'm going to be talking to you guys about Photoshop and some techniques I like to use. So in this picture, I wanted it to be a little bit more realistic, or at least comic booky, and I started out with using a grayscale image. So essentially what this style requires is a grayscale image to block out the composition and the shading and tones. And then I underlay a color layer in there so I can get the specific colors that the characters need. And when I set that original layer to overlay, I'm able to generate more colors for myself to blend with. So I merge all those layers together and I blend it. Simple. Just hit buttons and get a picture. Easy. So I'll talk you through some of the buttons I have to hit. Essentially what I'm doing right now is I'm using a brush that has sensitivity to the size and to the opacity of it and the pressure of the stylus controls that. So I use a Wacom Intuos 2 and that's how I draw. It's pretty old technology so you could probably round one up for about a hundred bucks. Not that much of an investment anymore so that's nice. I start out with some low contrast on Morgana, high contrast on Kale, and very high contrast on Zareth because of who he is. Here's where I add the colors in, and if you notice, it's not like a multiply layer. It's not just adding black. What it's doing is on overlay, it turns it into dodge and burn. And if you're not familiar with those, please don't use them outright. They're really bad outright, but as a whole layer massing, they're actually really amazing tools. So what they'll do is make their highlights yellower or brighter and your shadows kind of punchier and redder. And so when you use them individually, it really does look bad. You have to like really know what you're doing. And I've seen it done magically, but as far as a learning tool, it's much easier to teach that a black and white layer with overlay on it is easier to use than the individual burn and dodge tools. So what you've seen right there is I have everything merged together and I hit Control Shift Alt and E and I just made this fist and just mashed the buttons on my computer and now I have an image. Um, the next step is hit save and you're done. <laughs> That's a little bit harder than that, sorry. So essentially what I've done is merge the layers so I can sample more colors and use them to blend with each other. So that's the key of this whole style. You don't generate colors on your own. You use the colors that Photoshop has generated and use a low level opacity to start to generate new colors based on where you want to go and what colors are around it. So you'll see Morgana's wing has a little bit of red on it or that like salmon color because Kale is providing some ambient light for that purple to react to. So that's the general concept of that. Everything else is pretty standard, just drawing with that uh, same brush that has the pressure sensitivity and the size sensitivity to it. Until I get to Morgana's wings, it's the one part where I change it up. It's a little bit sharper and less reactive to pressure. And then for her hair, I have it the opposite. I have it so that it's more reactive to the pressure and less reactive in the size. So the opacity changes faster than the size does and that creates a different reaction. And the brush strokes look incredibly different. So you'll start to see that kind of dichotomy happen in the side of the screen where I have, I guess this is right below me. So essentially there's this like little wavy thing that tells you what your brush is doing in the background, which is really a good indicator of what kind of attitude I'm going with. So you'll see that when I want a punchier impact, I'll have a lower control over the transfer, which is the opacity, and I'll have a higher control over the size, which is what you're seeing in the detailed feathers. And so the, the idea behind detailing one of their feathers over the other is kind of forcing that perspective a little bit better and then also drawing the eye to the contrast between them. So you'll see that I'm sampling colors from around the picture in order to generate new objects. I'm not inventing colors out of the blue. And so that's that just about covers all the big ideas that went on in here. If you guys have any specific questions, feel free to ask them. I love talking about Photoshop. 
So message me, give me comments, and I will be happy to answer your questions. Have a nice day, guys. Bye.